Hello, my name is Michał Słowikowski and I am pre-sales engineer in Datapolis. In this video, I will show you how easily you can build and deploy SharePoint workflows with our solution Datapolis Workbox. In this video, we will create leave request approval process. For that, I've prepared my custom list with three columns. Leave type, start date and end date. Now we will go to the list tab and to the workbox settings button. On this page you will see all workflows related to this list or library. Now we will create new workflow. And we will click OK. Now the designer will load up. You can see the workbox help window, which we will close for now. If you would like to read it later, you can find it in support and feedback and in the workbox help option. When you create new workflow, you will see beginning state, finishing state, workbox roles and our tool panel. To start designing workflow, we'll place some states. States are in general phases of the process through which we'll, our, our workflow will go. To place state, we need to click on the state icon and then once again click in the desired place. We'll place some additional states for now. Now we can customize them by changing names and modifying color. Now we need to connect those phases of the process with actions. Actions are transitions which are started by the user. So we'll click on the add action icon and we'll just drag and drop actions between states. As you can see, you can also add action by clicking on the action icon on state. You can also rename actions. Additionally, you can also modify the finishing state. So when we will finish by clicking approve, the end state will say approved. And when we will be clicking on reject, it will be rejected. Now we need to create workflow permissions. For that, we'll create new role.
to the role approver, we'll assign static user Anna. Now we need to tell our system which actions can be performed by the role approver. In our case, we want it to be approve, reject and ask for clarifications. To assign proper permissions, we need to just drag and drop the role on specific action. Now we can check which actions will be performed by the role of approver. As you can see, we can reject, approve and ask for clarifications. Additionally, we want to assign permissions for, for the author of the item, so we will click on the answer, select permissions option and select proper role. Now we can just save and deploy workflow to SharePoint. OK, now I will open new tab and go to our list. I will create now new form. Now I will just refresh my web browser. As you can see, Workbox created two additional columns. One which is saying what is the status of the workflow and second which is showing in which phase of the process currently we are. Because this is a new leave request we are in the leave request draft state. OK, now we would like to process it and send it to approver. For that, we can go and select from drop down menu action sent to approval, or we can go to the seek leave option and from the workflow actions also select send to approval. We will confirm and as you can see the state of the workflow automatically has changed and currently we are in waiting for approval. Now I will try to run an action to which I do not have permissions and as you can see I do not have any additional options available in drop down menu. If I will go to form, I have my workflow actions control disabled. So now I will just change my web browser. And here you can see I'm logged in as user Anna. I will refresh my screen. And I will open menu. And as you can see, I have all of those actions available for action. I will select Approve. Now, our leave request approval process is completed and we are in the state Approved.
if we would like, we can go inside of the workflow history and we can check what happened in each phase of the process. Now we will go back to our designer and add some visual modifications to our actions. We can go to each action and select option appearance. Here we can select one of predefined icons or one of the icons which we can upload to our system. Now we will save and deploy our workflow one more time. And we will create new item. Workflow is starting. And we will select option send to approval. As you can see now, our action has visual representation of icon which we've selected in the designer. If we will go to our form, we will also see modified icon. Now I will change my web browser back to user Anna. I will refresh it and I will select one of options. I will approve also that item. Now we will modify our workflow to be much more dynamic. For that, we will use additional list called Organization Structure. This lists hold all of our employees and their managers. Now we will go back to our designer. We'll go to the Approver and we will remove user Anna from our statically assigned users. We will go to the send to approval action and we will go to activities. This window holds all technical related informations like for example assigning permissions, modifying item values, or performing technical activities. We will go to the Permissions tab and we will select Add to Row. We will drag and drop that activity to our diagram and we will edit our activity. We can rename that activity to be much more understandable so it will be a sign approver. Here we will select to which role we want to assign a user. 
and we need to point which user will be assigned. We'll click on edit lookup icon. We will create new lookup from scratch. And we will go to our organization structure. We will go to current, site, site lists and libraries, organization structure, item, and manager. This way we are showing that we are looking for manager of specific person. In our case that person would be the creator of the form. So we need to modify the filter, not point to ID, but to point to employee property. To point it to current user, we need to create additional lookup. So once again we'll click on edit lookup icon, we'll create new lookup from scratch, we'll extend the current node, and we'll select current user. Now we'll just approve, and that lookup means that we are looking for manager of the user, which is the same as the employee. So we'll click OK, OK, and OK. Now, one more time we'll just save and deploy workflow. After changes were made, we can close it and we'll create new item. Now we'll just send our request to approval. We are waiting for in waiting for approval state, so we will try to approve it as user Anna. As you can see, user Anna doesn't have any permissions for the for the workflow actions. The reason for that is in our organization structure. The manager of user Michal Słowikowski is user Michal Słowikowski. So we'll go back to our web browser as user Michal Słowikowski and as you can see now, we have all of those actions available for us. So I can approve my request. The last phase of creating of our workflow we'll be creating a simple form through which user will be able to communicate with approver or with the system. In our case, we'll go to our designer and we'll give option to ask for clarifications for the approver. For that, 
we'll just double click on ask for clarifications and we'll select option launch form. Here we have various options which gives us possibility to gather the feedback from the user. It can be quick form, it can be info path form or custom ASPX page. Of course you can also turn off the form so user will not be able to confirm or provide any informations. For now we'll use the option of quick form. To create the form we need to first create variables which will hold the values from the form. We'll click manage variables and we'll select new variable. Now we'll name our variable. It will be comment. Now we need to assign the comment variable to our form fields. For that we'll just click on the green icon. Now we'll edit our field properties. We can select what type of the variable it will be, but for us multi-line text will be the best. We want it to be obligatory and as a plain text. I will now click OK and one more time also I will click OK. What we can do for, with that kind of comment? For example, we can put it in some additional column which will hold that value or for example we can send it in email. For that we will go to the general tab in activities window and we'll select option send an email. We can just drag and drop the same way as we done with add to roll and we can edit the properties of the activity. We will rename it to be notify requester We need to select recipients of the email and we know that the recipient has to be an author of the item so we will go to current item in the SharePoint branch and we will select the value created by. Here we can also provide additional recipients of the message but we'll now focus on the title and the body of the message. So here we can provide title, dear author, uh, approver, or clarifications. We'll go to message body and we'll provide the message we want to send to author. Additional clarification. And here we'll go once again to our edit lookup icon we will create new lookup from scratch but we will not use the SharePoint branch we'll go to workflow variables we'll select the comment variable click OK and as you can see the lookup value has been inserted into our body of the message We'll just turn off the HTML coding for our email message and we'll just click OK and OK. So now we'll just save and deploy our workflow to SharePoint.
Okay. Now we'll add new item to our list. We'll send it to approval. And now we'll ask for clarifications. As you can see, we have our comment window in the form. And, as you can see, we are in waiting for clarification stage. We can go to our workflow history and we can check what happened during the workflow. As you can see, we have error message. So we'll go to activities history, to our send an email activity. We can check the body of the email, but for now we want to see what happened. Show error message. As you can see, we do not have any connections to mail server, so this is the reason we could not send an email. Of course, we can extend our workflow. We can add some decision blocks. We can automate some de decisions. We can prepare some automatic notifications, which will remind approver to approve before some date or after some specified time. But for now, this is a very basic introductory video, how to create leave request approval. If you will have some additional questions, please contact us. We'll be glad to help you explore fascinating capabilities of our solution, Datapolis Workbox.